Hello and welcome back to Stephen C. Ministries. Today we're joined by a very special guest and fellow Australian, Lee Arne. Lee brings a wealth of experience to the podcast as she shares her New Age to Jesus testimony while exploring some of the paranormal experiences that she had in the New Age movement from a Christian and biblical perspective. If you're interested in more of Lee's work, you can find all of her links, as always, in the description box below, which I'd encourage you to check out. And hey, if you enjoy the podcast, why don't you consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even commenting. Things like that help out small YouTubers like me get this message out to far more people. Enjoy the podcast. So, Lee, I want to thank you so much for coming on today and being willing to share more about your story. Everyone's heard a little bit about that already, but I'm wondering if you could tell us some more about yourself in some greater detail. Thanks for having me. Um, well, I grew up uh, as a Catholic. Uh, my family wasn't um, so much as a dedicated Catholic, but we grew up that way. And I went to Sunday school as a child. Uh, I do remember um, I always had an affinity for God and for Jesus. So he was always there in my heart. And looking back now, he was present through the whole entire part of my life, and I can see that now. So um, moving along, um, at the age of 12, I had my first uh, UFO encounter experience, and I was with my mother and my brother at the time, and hypnosis actually revealed a little bit more later on um, it didn't happen together as at that time I was only 12. And I think this solidified a seed in me to search what this was about, what this was, um, who are they? Because even as a child, I think I remember hearing that um, UFOs and space visitors and aliens, and so I think this whole alien agenda has been going on for quite some time, pretty much since the 50s. Um, and I remember at about age 14 when all, all, all of my girlfriends were buying makeup and clothes, I was buying books on UFOs, um, Bigfoot, um, human spontaneous combustion, all of that. I was looking to all the mysteries and I was actually biting into um, the fruit that, um, you know, in the story of Adam and Eve, we're not to look at the tree of good and evil because you, you go down that knowledge path, which we're not supposed to know about. We're supposed to be pure and simple. So um, I can tell you a little bit about that encounter, if you like. Every year there was a big festival and we could go outside at nine o'clock at night and see the fireworks from the festival. So we were just waiting in the backyard and there was a thing back then. I, I thought, what is that? And it was directly across from where we were standing and it was a classic shape of a UFO, so it had like a, a slightly curved bottom and the top was sort of like that, okay? It was the colour of orange and it was emanating this haze, so it's sort of like a fluoro colour. And we were just fascinated. We stopped dead in our tracks and said, oh, my gosh, and I think my mum said it's a UFO because she had actually had encounters herself, which is very mm. interesting. Um, so we watched this, and it was about the size of two buses if you put them side by side, and it went behind the trees and we were waiting for it to come out the other side, but it didn't. And in that time, my mum said to my brother, go inside and get the camera. So he went in to get the camera and he took ages we were waiting for that camera. Anyway, um, the UFO seemed to vanish behind these trees and we just remember leaving to go back inside because we had missed the fireworks. 
And some time had elapsed, 45 minutes or something like that. And so we just remember we didn't see the fireworks and there seemed to be a bit of a missing time, which is quite often happens in those uh, type of experiences. Um, so when I was in, oh, I'm just trying to think. Much, much later, I had a regression to um, find out what happened in that experience. And it was only through the new age circles that made me question, oh, can I have regression and find out? Okay, I'll do that. So I did that. And I was regressed by Mary Rodwell. I'm not sure if you're familiar with her. She's um, a very popular UFO researcher. However, she's more um, coming from the perspective that they're here to help us. Um, so anyway, I was regressed and I was, one minute I was on the ground, the next thing I was in this UFO and there were three beings there and just myself. So there was a typical alien grey. There was a... Um, what they call a Nordic. So he had uh, tan skin, blonde hair, it was pushed back and he had a blue jumpsuit and he had an emblem on the left-hand lapel, which was a circle with a triangle in it. And there was another being, which was a most grotesque figure, which I found hard to look at. He was tall and had a cape that come down to the ground. It was a deep purple colour, like a deep plum colour, and it had a high collar. He had an elongated head and he had um, very wrinkly skin and he had the big um, black eyes and I didn't like to look at his eyes. Now, apparently um, they had told me things um, that... They, um, I can't remember word for word, but it was to the effect of we are selecting you for a, um, they didn't say mission, but it was like for a mission in the future. And we like some key um, personality traits that you have. And um, they kept saying this and it was the the main one with the cape that was talking the others were quite silent and that's about all the information I got and that was sort of uh the end of the hip hypnosis session now I feel that um later on I became uh, a counsellor and I work for various uh counselling um organizations mainly grief bereavement trauma loss that type of thing and I later on became counselor for people who've had these abductions because a part of me wanted to know more about it myself so I thought by helping these people I'm actually learning and doing my own research as well um, and at that time uh, it was uh, pointless really because these people were having experiences and they've got all these questions and there's there's no answers for them okay unless you come from a biblical perspective which came later which I'll I'll talk about later there is no solid answers for these questions amen so it was more of a support group and we ran these support groups from our home. We'd have up to 15 people coming and a lot of these people were involved in the occult. Okay, so that's a very interesting thing that these people having these experiences are also doing occult practices because that's actually what opens the door to it. For my own experience, I think it was my curiosity about what are these things, what are the UFOs, what are the aliens, that was enough for me to open the door 
um, spiritually speaking, for the demonic to come in and play havoc with your mind. Um, so going back to that experience at age 12, I came into my 20s and around and at, in my 20s I started to become worldly you know I was going to nightclubs I was hanging out with the friends and drinking and partying and and God was not first priority in fact I don't think God was in the equation at all then and I made some huge errors and I was very um repentant about that and some of the the poor choices I've made I was literally I felt a lot of shame and I prayed to Jesus and I prayed um just just for him to hear me just for him to come and nurture me um because I'd also had a very traumatic upbringing my family life was um, very dysfunctional. My father was abusive. He was an alcoholic and the abuse was um, spousal abuse as well as the kids. And I think for the whole time I lived at home up until I virtually got married, I was living on eggshells. So trauma is a key reason for these experiences to come in as well because it's all demonic. But I didn't know that at that time. Um, and then years later, I got involved in um, the whole occult thing myself and I didn't know it was new age. If someone said, oh, you're in the new age, I'd say, what? What's that? I didn't know. Um, I started out by doing um, meditation and then I started to have um, these visions and, and experiences that would come through the meditation and it opened up that door bigger and bigger for these um, so-called aliens to come and mess with me. And I had a lot of traumatic experiences with them. Uh, I'd wake up with uh, blood on my pillow, blood, um, you know, between the sheets, um, bruises, scratches. Um, I had some scoop marks. Um, I have one on the, the um, elbow one at the back of uh, the neck. Um, and when you were researching all of that from a new age perspective, you're told that they're here for humanity. They're here to help. So all the people having those experiences, like yourself, um, they're hiding the, the bad experiences that are happening. They're only mentioning the positive ones or what they perceive to be the positive ones because they would say, oh, you know, if you mention a bad experience, they'd say, oh, your frequency must be low, your vibration's low. And New Age is all about ascending to the, you know, getting your frequency up to, to become ascended. Uh, this is the belief. So um, lots of things happened and um, um, I can go back to anything if you want more detail and we can sort of go from there. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I've been really interested in lately is this link between the occult and these uh, UFO experiences. I'm seeing increasingly a link between the occult and uh, UFO researchers, I'm thinking in particular of uh, the practice of meditation to get in touch with some of these beings. And thinking back on some of the guests that I've had on the podcast, including uh, a lady by the name of Jack Marino Chen, who mm -hmm. has had uh, these UFO experiences growing up, and then has developed an interest in the occult. And it seems that everyone I've spoken to so far that is having these experiences somehow has a link to the occult. 
You also mentioned uh, a lot of these people have a link to trauma. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you could elaborate a little bit more on that so that perhaps we can come to some solutions and some resolutions for people that are experiencing this. Um, firstly, I'll address the first question you asked about people um, experiencing uh, these sort of alien UFO things and how that links to the occult. Um, basically, so what I am now, just so that the people understand, um, is I am a Christian counsellor, so everything is from a biblical perspective. So when dealing with people that come to me for alien abduction or, or that sort of phenomena, um, and, you know, if, the, if they're not understanding how that all fits together, what I would tell them is that spiritually what happens is um, we are not supposed to sin because it opens a door and a spiritual door, okay? So that that um, when that happens, and that can happen through any of these occult practices, including practices that people may not be aware that are occult. So a lot of people don't know that Reiki, for example, is an occult practice because they think it of it as healing oh it must be from god but that's not the case you see they have to do a bit of research about it um so they open this door and spiritually um a lot of the occult practices are connected to um false gods so that's that's how it connects to sin because we're not to worship other gods um, God is our number one, and there's only one true God, whereas in lots of um, esoteric backgrounds, Indian and, and different uh, cultures like that, they have millions of gods and they can make up their own God for something. And uh, basically it becomes worship of self as well. So we're putting ourselves before God. You've also got people who worship trees and plants and um, solstices and, and different things too. Well, instead of worshipping the creator, they're worshipping the creation. And so that becomes um, ideology, a false god. And so that's how the door is open and sin gets in. And when sin gets in, we become... Uh, impure we're not holy the way God wants us to be and it makes a, a door for the enemy to get a foothold so the enemy comes in and then all of the other um, things that the enemy brings um, start to manifest in that person's life for the audience just so we're following a bit of a linear timeline in your life I think it'd be great. I want to talk to you more about uh, what you believe the nature of these beings to be and a little bit more about uh, solutions to this problem. But we sort of left off with you still involved in the occult. And I'm wondering now, you're a Christian counselor. How mm -hmm. did you come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior before we address these things from a Christian perspective? What happened was uh, I'd met my, I went through a divorce and I met my new husband he was having the same experiences. So we met at a place called Westall, and Westall actually had a big UFO encounter in 1966 where a whole school um, saw two or three UFOs, not sure if it's two or three, but a whole school of, what, 300 students plus teachers saw these UFOs. And so there's a, there's a playground at Westall, and we met there and we had a meeting with uh, 15 people were there. And so I met him there because we were there to discuss um, our experiences and what these things were, etc. So he came into my life and that actually broadened that pathway for us, that not the narrow path, but the other path, the, the one that leads to destruction. And um, so we started to go to conferences. We even formed a group for ourselves and had seminars and invited guest speakers. And then we formed six groups worldwide. And I was sort of like an ambassador for those groups. And I actually felt that um, these aliens 
or so-called aliens that were in my life that I was having regular contact with were feeding me the information to believe that I was an ambassador for humanity to push their doctrines, to get people to get on the path of thinking that they're here to save us, they're here for humanity. And so we went through, um, there's lots more I can talk about that, but we went through a whole gamut of things and then we started to experience shadow beings around the house and then it was um, the house became haunted there was um, every day I'd wake up and walk around the house The just the pictures on the walls were crooked like this and I'd have to straighten everyone up things were breaking electronics we had the air conditioner was spitting out chips of ice the tv would break um, there was a heaviness in the, in the atmosphere. It's a, like a spiritual dark cloud that not that you see with your own eyes, but your spiritual eyes. Um, and we got into a spiritual warfare battle and it was chronic. It was bad. And I felt like I was being depleted, like they were sucking life out of me. And the experiences were getting worse. They were getting more aggressive with more scratches all over my body. So in that um, mindset of, oh, my gosh, I'm just going crazy. Um, and all these things happening, losing our job and money was becoming, or it was just disappearing. And um, I called out to God and I said, Jesus, what's happening I don't understand what's happening because I never related that they were opposite of Jesus. And when I started to call out to Jesus and, and start to pray to him, it got worse because it's like the battle was on. You know, it's like a tennis court. You got Jesus on one side, the devil on the other side, and he's got hooks in you because you've been doing his thing. You've been on his side of the court. And Jesus is fighting for me. And um, it was it was a serious battle. And um, I started to get serious about Jesus and I started to um, let things go because I had to focus on Jesus and it took a whole year for me to come out of everything because I think, and I see it a lot in people, when they're coming to Jesus, they don't fully comprehend at the beginning. It takes time. There's a process and it took about a year for us to come out of it. Um, but the process um, began and the first thing I prayed for, because the house was haunted, I thought we've got to get out of this house. So I prayed, um, Jesus, help us get a new place, a bigger place for my kids and just help us. And the way we, and I started to stop all the things just because I mentally couldn't cope at that time. And the way we got the next, the house, the next house was a miracle. Jesus showed me a miracle. Almost, it was almost like he's saying, I'll show you a miracle so you trust me. And so how that happened um, was I was driving around a new estate not new, new, but say 10 years old. And there was a sign um, out the front of this house and it said Felice. And going back to this time, that was when when there was a house Felice, there'd be 20 couples lined up to get in. There was a, a fight to get the, who who's going to get it. And my mum was with me and she said, why don't you just stop and have a look at that house? And I said, mum, I don't think I can afford this. It was in a bit more upmarket estate. We went in 
And I said, I'll just have a look. So I went through. The real estate agent said, oh, you're my first customer. I don't know what's going on today. There's no one here lining up. There are usually heaps of people. You're the only one here. And I said, oh, that's odd. So we had a look and and um, he said, how do you like it? And I said, it's great. Uh, how much is it? And he told me the price. And I said, oh, I didn't think I could afford it. It's too much. And he said, well, you know, I know this woman wants someone in the house quickly. So perhaps I can ask her if she'll reduce the price. And I said, I was sort of thinking, oh, I don't know, I'm feeling the pressure. So he asked the woman, got back to me, and she said, yes, um, I'll lower the price. So I thought, oh, okay. And then I said, it's still a little bit too high. And he said, well, let me ask one more time. and he come back and said, she said, if she doesn't have to put in a dishwasher, she'll make it uh, a little bit cheaper. And I said, okay. And I asked my husband, he said, well, let's, let's do it. Okay. So we did. And when I moved into that house, um, I was still had my crystals. I still had my things and um, God began to show me and literally speak to me one day. So that was the first miracle. And I thought, wow, you know, here we are. And I prayed for that. And here we are in this bigger, better place. And it felt different. Um, and then one day I was just doing the, the housework and I heard a voice say, my dear child. And I didn't think at first and then I thought, why am I saying to myself, my dear child, why am I saying that? Because I thought it was me and then I heard it again a day or two later and I thought, that's not me, that's not me. And I sort of got goose pimples, you know, and then I heard the words, it's time. And I thought, I know this is going to sound silly, but I was like, time for what, you know? But this is the Lord looking back, and there's more to this story. The Lord was saying, it's time to come out. And then I heard, shut down your groups. And this was a very soft, gentle voice, but commanding, shut down your groups. And a couple of months had passed by and I knew I was being called and I was struggling to let go of all the groups I had built up. And then one day I just thought, I'm just going to let them go. And I told the ambassadors of those groups, I'm out. And they just thought, oh, you're going crazy. And uh, I thought, no, you just don't understand. I told a few of them I'm turning to God and they just thought I was completely nuts, okay. Um, then a couple of weeks after that, um, and that's why I say this happened over time, it took me a while to comprehend that God was working with me and he was really pulling me out of it all. And he showed me this vision because I find he communicates with me a lot in visions and it's probably because I'm a visual learner. I, I need to see things to learn. Um, so I saw in this little vision was um, all the new ages I had known in the centre of this room and it was a square room and it was white, all white. And they were all standing in there and I was there too. And then in this vision, I see myself going back to the corner and I hear two words and the two words were set apart, right? And it wasn't till many months after reading the Bible that I hear Jesus is the cornerstone. 
and he put me in a corner and it just it just made me cry because I just thought, oh, he's so beautiful. And then he, I got this word, prayers, and it was his voice again. And I thought, okay, what sort of prayers? Um, because I was praying at that time, but I knew these prayers were something different. And I Googled special prayers and it came up with deliverance prayers and I read them and I said, yeah, I think I have to do these. So I printed them off and I did a um, morning. I made a commitment to Jesus. I said, I'm going to do this morning and night. So I did it morning and night. And on the third day, I was delivered. This thing came off of me and it was a demonic presence and it left me because it could no longer be around because Jesus had me at that point. And um, I became filled with the Holy Spirit and um, it was such a strange feeling as well because I sat there and I felt like, I was under a spell all those years and it just broke like that. The spell was broken. My vision used to be a little blurry and I could see crystal clear and I was just looking at everything, thinking everything just looks so different and there was light in, in the atmosphere before it was dim and I didn't know where I was. I was, I was like, what just happened? Like, where, where have I been all the years? I felt like a chunk of my life was um, missing or like I wasn't present. And so, yeah, um, and God just continued to speak to me. And then I heard the words church, so I actually went to this church but looking back now he could have been saying you are my church or part of the church but I did go to a church and a month or two later and by the way when I went to church the first time the pastor spoke and it's like he was talking about me and I just broke down and yeah, and a couple of months after that, I heard the words full submersion. And I thought, hmm, what's that? So I Googled it again and it came up with baptism. And I thought, okay, um, see, and the internet, people say it is demonic, but God will use it for good too. And he used that as a tool for me um, to enable the messages for me to understand and I was reading about how one has to be fully immersed and to go down and lose the old self and come up like resurrection and it's about repentance and I heard the word November so I went to the church and I asked the pastor to um, I'm ready for baptism it was September and um he said there's nothing available in November. And I thought, oh, that's that's odd because so far God has been spot on. And I just asked him to, to check again. So he did. He got the diary and he said, look, I'll show you, Lee. And he turned over to the page and there was four people wanting bat baptism that he didn't know of. It was written in the book. And he said, oh, okay, well, maybe we will do baptism because there's four other people wanting it too. And so uh, my husband and I got baptised. So that's really how the Lord pulled me out of it all and brought me into his presence and I was just a new creation. So, yeah. That's, that's really incredible. And so now... You're doing Christian counseling and you're helping people come out of a background that you're obviously very uh, empathetic towards considering mm. your own experiences. And so I'm wondering now in your own research and in your practice, 
what sort of experiences do you see people commonly having and how do you understand them now as a Christian from a biblical perspective? I've had quite a few people come for various different things, but for the most part, it is dealing with aliens and it's trying to convince them that they're they are demonic. And I think you asked the question before, what do I see them as? And I see them as, um, you know, whether they're fallen angels or whether they're just the the demonic spirits, you know, from the Nephilim. Um, either way, it's still not of God and part of the demonic kingdom. Um, but they're definitely interdimensional uh beings that can sort of shape shift to appear as whatever they want to appear to appease you. For example, if um, I have some people who are um, were practicing the Ouija board and so they were seeing um, apparitions of ghosts and I would say they're, they're not actually ghosts. The Bible tells us that they aren't ghosts. But these demons, they can appear however they want to appease that person. So because that person was trying to contact spirits of dead loved ones, then they'll appear as a ghost of, say, perhaps a mother, father, or just a, just a random ghost of a child. Whereas if a person's um, looking at UFOs or studying um, outer space and uh, what NASA says and this and that, then that's probably the way they'll come and interact with you, appear as an alien, as a being. So it really, depending on the door that you're opening, they will try and trick you because they're very deceptive so that you take that carrot so that you think that's real. Um, so the most things I've I've had is that come through my ministry is um, people experiencing ghosts and the paranormal where the whole house can be uh, affected in various ways. Definitely the alien demonic deception and also sleep paralysis. There's evidence to suggest that it is demonic because they can be de delivered from it and then go about a normal life so that's the proof that's the proof we need to look at in your practice one of the things that you encourage people to do obviously would be to come to christ right and so in your own experience it seems that a lot of these uh, these supernatural encounters that you were having have stopped under the lordship of jesus and so I'm wondering if somebody's having these experiences like you were all those years ago and they're listening to this podcast now and they're not really sure where to start or what the first steps are, what would you say to them? What would you say to a, long, uh, a younger Lee in that scenario? Yeah, good question. Um, well, look, everyone's heard of Jesus. Everyone has heard of God, the Holy Spirit, um, pretty much their whole life but have never really um looked into what that actually means and for me becoming a born again christian i can tell you it was totally different to what i thought it was um you know if i heard the term uh born again christian in my 20s i almost thought that was like a cult um so there's even deception in that there's so many worldly uh, deceptions that kind of overlay everything but the bottom line is that it's true and if there's the demonic there there is definitely God because he's the creator of, of all and um, you know just the message of the gospel that Jesus died for us on the cross to take away the sins of the world and by receiving him we have um, everlasting life when we believe in him um, so it's it's sort of um, it's a little bit tricky because you can tell a person all the information they need but the key thing is they ha it's a choice and they have to want that for themselves um, if they want to be set free from the demonic 
They have to then take steps to understand who God is, who Jesus is. Read the word of God because it's like a double-edged sword. That's our weapon against the demonic. Um, and we, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against these rulers, powers, and principalities. And so that that's the whole demonic kingdom in the hierarchy. And so the only way for them to truly learn is to start reading the Bible or listening to the audio Bible because both are good. Um, some people feel like they can't read. They try and read it. doesn't make sense to them. Then I say, listen to it in the background while you do your dishes or something. And slowly but surely it clicks. It starts to make sense. And um, then people know a little bit about themselves, their identity of who they are in Christ and their authority in Christ, how to defend themselves, you know, things like putting on the full armour of God. What does the blood of Jesus do for us? These are all our protection. Um, and these are the things they need to know to protect themselves, how to rebuke a spirit, you know, an unclean spirit, how to walk in truth, walk in the spirit as opposed to being in the flesh. Um, yeah, but there's lots of learning, but there's always a starting point for everyone. There was for me and there was for you too, but we are here now so it can be done and it's always uh, a positive, you know. And once you know truth, you can't go back. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that one of the things that's been really helpful for me in understanding all of this is like, if you're still participating in the occult and you're still doing things in a way that God doesn't condone, um, I've heard it put like this. I think the gentleman I heard say this is the guy, I think his name is Alex behind Spirit Answers podcast. And if you mm -hmm. guys haven't seen that, I'd really encourage you to check it out. It's an awesome podcast. And if you like this, I think you'll like what he does over there. But he compared... Uh, praying for protection while still engaging in these practices, like praying for God to protect you while you're running across the freeway, throw away those crystals, throw away those magic books. Don't have one foot in the Christian world and one foot in the world mm. of the occult because you're dabbling in God's enemy's world when you're doing that. And it's going to open you up to all kinds of persecution that we're talking about today. So some of the things that have really helped me was having a good local church to be a part of, you know, people to pray with, uh, a pastor to help me learn the word of God yes. and also just repenting, repenting, like you were explaining, reading your Bible, coming to know God, and then turning away from these practices is what is what God calls us to do. And there's actually freedom in that. There's freedom in turning mm -hmm. away from those practices. I I just might touch on one of the um some of the uh things that I did use to practice because I thought they were just um, pure and simple and just, just um, you know, I, I realised they come under the, the banner of occult practices and it was um, meditation and, you know, it's so popular in the world. It's like, oh, you know, chill out, get your peace and just uh, meditate. But that was actually what really opened me up as well. And I started, you know, getting more visual things through that. And at one of the meditations I did, I was um, told that um, my father would die and I was given the, the uh, date, which was, it was 2007 when I did the meditation. And they said, um, June it said JJ, which I, I figured out June, July 2008, and that my father would pass. And it was this real foreboding experience. And it really scared me at the time. And I sort of put it at the back of my mind. But a year later, my dad did die in July, uh, sorry, June, and his funeral was July. And so that became a red flag for me, thinking, um, if this was good, like I don't think God would would predict such a thing, you know. Um, and it just it just became one of those red flag moments. I thought I'm just going to park that over here because I'm not too sure about this. And so um, I also did Reiki, and I noticed that sometimes when I was doing Reiki, that the room could go very cold 
or people that I was working on were having experiences with, say, perhaps aliens or, or angels or something like that, and they would say things like, oh, my my um, spirit guide's here with us now. It's just over there in the corner. And I would feel the, the room at atmosphere go cold. Um, so some of these practices seem quite um, nice to start off with, but as you go further down and experience certain things, they, there's a few red flags. And so again, yeah. guys, I would really encourage you, please do check out all of Lee's links. As always, they're provided in the description box below. And Lee and I spoke before, and Lee is happy to have people reach out to her. Uh, so you're still involved in the Christian counseling space, Lee? Yes, I do the Christian counseling. Um, anyone can come to me for, you know, even if it's just a question or if they want to uh, do a couple of sessions with me. I don't charge per se, but um, I do if they feel that they could donate something to the ministry because part of my ministry is giving out free Bibles and the four Gospels. And so all of the income that I get through the other parts of the ministry go to supporting that. So, and I do give away lots of free Bibles. So, yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for your hard work. Thank you for all that you're doing for Jesus and for his kingdom. And thank you again yeah. for coming on. Uh, people are obviously going to be uh, really captivated by what you have to say. And uh, thankfully there's so much out there that you've put out for them to learn even more about your perspective and, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to come on here. We're going to speak a little bit more uh, after you. this, but for now, I think it's goodbye to all of our listeners. Thank you for listening. And uh, please, again, check out everything that Lee has to offer. And if you like this kind of Christian content, please consider liking and subscribing here and to Lee's channel too. Thank you and God bless.